Hello, my name is Peter Raymer, and I'm going to talk about D365 Sys Operation Framework mandatory parameters. So uh, in some past videos, we've looked at how to add parameters, how to override the lookups, um, how to add validation to ensure that these parameters have correct values. Um, and then in this video, I want to show you how you can actually make these parameters show as mandatory. Um, and, and we can tell it's mandatory by this red box around the parameter, as well as the red star. This matches uh, functionality that you would see on another grid or a field on a form in D365. So users are going to be familiar with this functionality that if we don't populate this functionality um, or, or these parameters, when I click OK, I'm going to get an error message just automatically telling me that this field control is required. And same thing if I populate that one but not the other, I can click OK and see that the from date is required. So even though I could add validation to do this same um, thing, that might take a little Little bit more work if I'm just trying to make sure that it's populated um, and it would require the user to fill in this parameter uh, click OK then see the error message whereas having these fields highlighted in red with the star right from the beginning helps the user know that they need to populate this value and that it's not an optional parameter um, as parameters often are on these types of sys operation framework uh, batch job forms. So um, let's look in the code of how you would accomplish that. First, a quick recap. Um, in order to create a sys operation framework batch job, we really need three types of classes. We need a contract class that's going to end in the word contract and has this data contract attribute. We need a service class that extends sys operation service base, and we need a controller class that's going to extend sys operation service controller. And so I've got a video that explains how to create sys operation framework batch jobs. I recommend you review that one first, and then once you've created your um, batch job that you come back here for learning how to make those parameters uh, mandatory. All right, so now that you've created your um, batch job, let's look at how we make some fields mandatory. So I'm going to first show you on my contract class. I've got two different parameters that we've made mandatory, the from date and to date. And I've got two parameters here. Um, or two parm methods, I should say, um, parm date from and parm date to. And I've added the data member attribute to each of them, and that's what causes it to show up as a parameter on the dialog form when I run this job. Um, but there is no attribute here that inherently makes this um, mandatory. Instead, in order to make the field mandatory, I need to use the um, UI Builder class. And so that's the same class that we use if we want to override a lookup on a parameter. So first, you need to create the class um, that should end in the word UI Builder as a best practice. It needs to extend sys operation automatic UI builder. I named mine RSM tut, which is short for tutorial sys operations UI builder. Then I've added two dialog fields to store a reference to my parameter field. One's called dialog field date from, and one's called date to dialog field. Um, so I guess I sw switched those a little bit, but they're both of type dialog field. The next thing you need to do is you need to implement this post build method. So public void post build, make sure you call super. And then after that, um, we can add a few lines of code to make these parameters mandatory. The first line we need is we need to get a reference to the field control we're looking to make mandatory. So I'm going to say dialog field, date from dialog field. Um, equals this dot bind info dot get dialog field and this really takes two parameters the first parameter is the data contract class so I can call this dot data contract object to get that data contract 
Then the second parameter is I need to tell it which parm method is tied to this data parameter. So I've got RSM tut sys operation contract parm date from. And then once I've got that reference, all I need to do is call dot field control dot mandatory and pass in true. And by doing that, I'm making this field control true. And so same thing with the uh, date two, I get a reference to it by passing in the contract class and parm date two. And then I call dot field control dot mandatory pass in true on this object. And once I do that, um, I need to come back to my contract class and I need to make sure I'm linking my contract class to the UI builder. And I do that by adding this attribute, sys operation contract processing, and I specify the name of the class, RSM tut sys operations UI builder. You'll replace this with the name of your UI builder class. And then that's it. Once I compile all of this in my project and I come back and I run my sys operation framework batch job, I can see that these two fields are highlighted in red and I have the red star. So this is just a really nice functionality, uh, nice um, ease of use for the user to be able to see right away that these fields are mandatory and have that functionality even without adding validation. Okay, hopefully you've learned something new today. Thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate you watching. If you liked the video, click the like button. I also invite you to push the subscribe button as well. If there's other topics you would like to see a video on, please post in the comments and I'll see what I can do. I hope you learned something new today. Thank you.